When you need to install wiring into a vehicle for a custom car audio system, there are definitely some valuable tips and tricks to know in order to get better results. What wire do we need? What parts of the wire must be protected? And how can we test the wire to verify it is good before installing all of the trim panels and having the headache of needing to pull it back out? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, we do car audio gear overviews, we do car audio lessons, and we also do car audio build log videos like this video, because in this video, we're doing the electrical install upgrade for Project Jetta. Without further ado, my friends, let's get into this. Let's kick things off here with seeing everything that I've got for wiring this build. So first of all, we've got a bunch of 14 gauge speaker wire, more than enough for our subwoofer and for our speakers if we need it. We've also got some zero gauge ground wire. This is tinned OFC, so although it's silver in color, it is OFC wire. We've got a bunch of the Karma Series RCA connectors. I misspoke earlier, this is all 14 gauge wire, so this is for the speakers, whereas this 12 gauge wire is for the subwoofer. We've got the zero gauge power wire here. Again, it's that tinned OFC for oxidation protection. And this is from the Colossus Flex line. Extremely, extremely flexible wire. Easy to run throughout the car, even though it is large in size. Got some different fuse blocks that we'll be using further down the line in the build once I build the amplifier rack and attach these. We've got our main system fuse. Got a battery terminal here. Not positive if I'm gonna use this, but I wanted to have it on hand just in case. Got some various heat shrink, along with some different connectors and our final system fuse. A special thanks to New Concepts for sending over all the wiring for this build and being a channel sponsor. Learn more about them at the link down in the video description. First thing I wanna do is get the big old power wire ran from the engine compartment to the back of the vehicle. Luckily on the Jetta, it's pretty easy. This is on the driver's side right next to the brake pedal. If we pull this out of the way, we can see that there's a nice big grommet that we can use. I'm gonna pop that grommet out and we're gonna put a hole in it using a better method than traditional. On a grommet like this, what a lot of people will do is they'll just cut like an X and then push the wire through, or they'll try to cut a hole and it might not be perfect. The problem with that is you can still have water kind of coming in on the wire. And I try to avoid that for obvious reasons. So the better approach here is to use a leather punch set. I like to pick a punch that is slightly smaller than the outside of the wire itself. And I can just give this a whack with a hammer and it's gonna give us a nice perfect cut through hole. After we make that cut, you can see how this is gonna have a nice perfect seal on the wire. To get the wire into the engine compartment, I'm gonna do the old zip tie trick here. I've already got the grommet threaded onto the wire here. Make sure that you have it in the correct direction, obviously. But I can just poke this through that hole that we saw there, and then I'll be able to fish it out in the engine compartment and pull this up through. Check it out, I pushed this up through and it was sitting right here when I came around to the engine compartment. So first try, I'm gonna need both hands here, but I can pull it up through. Once I have the wire ran into the engine compartment here, I like to make sure that it's good and protected. So this meant wrapping it wire loom like you see here and I use a specialty tool. I actually did a full review video about this so you can check out up in the corner of the screen. After I wrap the wire with the loom, I then wrap it with exterior protection tape from JK Tapes. This gives me a really, really nice, strong, protected wire inside the compartment. I make sure that that tape goes all the way back through the grommet when I pull it through like this. So you can see that is a nice, perfect firewall transition. Now I can run the rest of the power wire to the back of the vehicle. I'm gonna follow along this factory wire harness here. So I've got the main power wire laid in here and I've also ran the remote wire alongside that allows the head unit to tell the amplifiers to turn on. It is a little messy for the time being. I'm gonna clean everything up once I run all of the wires. But the last wire I wanna run on this side of the vehicle, since this is all going to be the power side of the vehicle, is I need to run the ACR connection wire. This is audio control's little dash control that we can use on the DSP amp in order to adjust the volume of the subwoofers. So I'm going to run that wire as well. Here's another helpful tip for you guys. Before you run these kind of wires that have smaller strands inside of them, always do a continuity test just to verify that the wires are good. There's nothing worse than running a wire through the whole vehicle, putting all the interior back in, and then finding out that somewhere in the wire there's an issue. So I always like to do this for these little dash control wires as well as RCA signal wires. 
As long as you use quality wire, you will rarely have an issue, but it's worth doing this quick test for that one time that you might find something. Now that I know that dash remote control wire is good, I can run it alongside the power wires and start buttoning everything up with some zip ties. Always be sure to use a good set of flush trim cutters to cut that end of the zip tie perfectly flush with the head. And here we have it, my friends. The positive power wire is completely ran. Everything is completely zip tied in there along with the remote turn on lead and the remote dash control for the ACR3 that's going to be right about here in the center console. Next up I need to run the RCA signal wires. These are going to carry the signal from the head unit to the back here to our DSP amplifier and what's really nice about this particular set is it has four different connectors so we can do front left, front right, rear left, and rear right. I'll be using the DSP amplifier to create the subwoofer signal and send that to the secondary sub amp so we only really need these four connections going up front. I'm going to run those along this side of the vehicle. It's usually a good idea if you can to try to avoid having the power wire and the signal wires on the same side of the vehicle. So in this case there's plenty of room on both sides so we're going to do that. But at the end of the day if you're using a high quality signal wire it's not as big a deal as what it used to be. You can still have this close to the power wire. You're obviously more prone to noise in that instance but again with a high quality signal wire it's not as likely to happen. I'm also going to run the speaker wires from the amplifiers up to here where they will make their connection which goes into the vehicle wiring because these door molexes are nearly impossible to get speaker wire through so I can use the factory speaker wiring it's not going to be a very big deal because it is shorter runs and what we're going to be doing for our application there would really be no huge benefit with increasing the speaker wire size and again it's nearly impossible to get through these anyway so it's going to do just fine for our application so signal and speaker wire are now ran on this side and you guys can see I've got the carpet back in the vehicle here. I can start adding the trim on the sides. I've got the wires secured on each side going into the trunk. There is still some work to do in the trunk. The last connection I need to add in the trunk here is to add a ground. Now I did measure this factory ground location right here and this measured to be less than 0.1 ohm of resistance all the way up to the front of the vehicle. So definitely a good ground. I'm going to make my connection there. I first strip away the insulation and I'm going to use this crimp terminal from New Concepts in my hydro crimper. I'm going to crimp this down. That gives us a really, really nice crimp on that wire. I can then apply the heat shrink and heat shrink it up. Now it's back into the trunk where I can connect the ground wire to the factory ground location using that OEM nut. And with that, my friends, we now have all the wires in the back of the trunk ready for the next stage of this project. Now you guys might have noticed that I've already applied all the sound treatment materials in this vehicle and that video is going to be coming up soon. I'm also going to make a video showing you guys how I built this special mounting panel that integrates into our center console for that remote dash control. We're also going to be building a box for these two 13s. So tons of cool videos coming up on this project. We just passed 500,000 subscribers. That's awesome guys. Thank you so much for all the support. If you are new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Once again, a special thanks to our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. For your next car audio build, definitely consider checking them out for all of your wiring needs. Also, a special thanks to Bryson, Mike, Ali, Jared, Jerry, Mark, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And as always, my friends, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to design, build, and install.